Many of you have been asking me to make a video about regional areas in Australia, especially considering that many of these areas usually tend to be a bit more affordable than major cities like Sydney, Brisbane, or even Melbourne. Disclaimer, these are my favorite areas and the areas that I know relatively well. Of course, there are many other areas that are considered regional for migration purposes across Australia, but these are my top five based on what I know and what I like. If you're interested, keep watching. Now, the first regional area area in my list is Wollongong. I already mentioned this in other videos but I actually go to Wollongong quite often because my Australian partner has relatives living there. And to be honest, in my personal opinion, Wollongong is an amazing city that during the past five years has changed significantly. The best way to describe it, I guess, is that this city has been going through gentrification. Meaning that in the past, my understanding is that it was an area that didn't have the best reputation, especially for living. But today, the city is super well kept, clean, and that was a super pleasant surprise last time I was here a few months ago. There are lots of trendy cafes and bars popping up. And the best thing about Wollongong, in my opinion, is that this area is located by the beach and you have easy access to all the beautiful coastal towns along the south coast of New South Wales. Just for reference, my favorite coastal towns are Bulai, Jarvis Bay, Eden, Naruma, and of course there are many others around the area, but these are the ones that every time we go driving along the east coast of Australia, we always stop in these beautiful towns and these beautiful areas because they are stunning. There are also other regional areas that I highly recommend taking out along the east coast of Australia, especially in New South Wales. And another thing that I really love about Wollongong and I think in New South Wales in general is that they have rock pools. Most coastal towns and even in the city as well when you go to Bondi Beach you're going to find rock pools which is something that I haven't seen at all here in Victoria or in other states like Queensland for example. Another great thing about living in Wollongong is that in general terms I think this city is a bit more accessible in terms of affordability than Sydney and perhaps if you work in Sydney but you live in Wollongong it's very easy you just have to catch the train and it takes you around one and a half hours to get to Sydney CBD. And also if you are planning to study here in Australia perhaps the University of Wollongong could be a great option for you if you want to live in this regional area. Now having said that considering that that Wollongong is an area that has been growing significantly during the past years. I understand that rent prices in this area have gone up considerably. For example, the median rental price for a house in Wollongong is around 660 Australian dollars per week. Whereas for a unit or an apartment, you can expect to pay around 500 per week. And if you want to buy a house, then the price goes up significantly and you can expect to pay above 1 million Australian dollars. Now let's talk about the labor market in Wollongong because this is something perhaps that it's worth noting if you're considering moving to this area and basically settling here and working. Now, Wollongong is located in the Illawarra region and the top five major industries in this area include healthcare and social assistance, education and training, retail trade, construction, public administration and safety. And the top five major occupations in this area are sales assistants, aged and disabled carers, registered nurses, general clerks and electricians. Now, the median weekly earnings across the New South Wales region, because I don't have a specific data for Wollongong, is around 1,339 Australian dollars. So if you are thinking of moving to New South Wales and you're seeking that beach kind of lifestyle, perhaps Wollongong could be a good option for you. Now, the second regional area in this list is Geelong. Geelong is located about 75 kilometers southwest of Melbourne in the state of Victoria. And this city is best known for its beautiful waterfront and cultural attractions. And I think you may want to know is that if you're a student, Deakin University has one of its campuses in Geelong. And actually, when I graduated from my psychology degree at Deakin University, we had our graduation ceremony at the Geelong campus. So now another great thing about living in Geelong is that this city again has been going through gentrification, very similar to Wollongong. And it's actually a pretty well-developed city with a lot of office buildings and jobs around the area. And it only takes you a bit over an hour by train to get to Melbourne city. So in terms of public transport and accessibility, Geelong is not a bad option at all. Now, in terms of housing, Geelong is actually a relatively affordable area to live in within Victoria. Within 
median rental price for a house being around 500 Australian dollars per week and for a unit or apartment around 487 Australian dollars per week. On the other hand, if you're looking at buying in Geelong, you can expect to pay around 964,000 Australian dollars. It's not too bad, again, especially when you compare it to other parts of Melbourne, Victoria. Now, in terms of Geelong's labor market, this is what you need to know. The top five major industries in this city include healthcare and social assistance, retail trade, construction, education and training, and manufacturing. And the top five major occupations include sales assistants, registered nurses, aged and disabled carers, retail managers, and general clerks. It's very interesting that the major industries and occupations in this regional area in Geelong are very similar to those in Wollongong. Now, the median weekly earnings across the state of Victoria, where Geelong is located, are around 1,280 Australian dollars. So again, Geelong is a regional area that perhaps you may want to consider if you are seeking to live close to Melbourne and in the state of Victoria. Now, third on our list is Ballarat. And again, we're still in the state of Victoria. Ballarat Ballarat is a city located around 115 kilometers northwest of Melbourne and it's a historically significant city known for its rich gold rush heritage, stunning architecture, historical buildings and cultural offerings. Interestingly enough, Ballarat is also a city that has experienced significant growth since the pandemic, especially because so many people during these times, during this period, decided to move away from the city to quieter areas, perhaps a bit more greener and with more freedom. And I honestly can tell you that Ballarat indeed has again gone through a huge gentrification process. This area has grown a lot and then I go there very often because I climb in the Grampians National Park. So we have to pass through Ballarat and it's insane how this city has changed. There's a very stark contrast between before the pandemic and after the pandemic. And indeed, there are lots of bars and restaurants and pubs popping up. It seems uh, very well maintained and super developed. So again, I think it's a, it's a really nice area to perhaps to consider. And also in terms of demographics, you tend to see now a much younger generation living there, like young professionals with families. Yeah, and I think this is great as well for, the, for this area too grow and develop and also encourage the creation of more jobs as well. Now, the downside of gentrification is that house prices in Ballarat have actually gone up slightly during the past years, again, since the pandemic. But having said that, when you compare the median prices in this area to others in Victoria or even other areas across Australia, it's still pretty affordable to both rent and buy here. For example, the median rental price for a house in Ballarat is around 400 Australian dollars per week and for a unit or apartment, 350 Australian dollars per week. And the median price for buying a house is around 620,000 Australian dollars. Not bad at all, considering that most houses here in Australia, especially major cities and the most popular states, are usually over 1 million. And something else that it's pretty good is that if you live in Ballarat, you're only one hour and 30 minutes away from Melbourne by train. So again, it's pretty accessible in terms of public transportation. Now, when it comes to Ballarat's labor market, the top five industries are healthcare and social assistance, education and training, accommodation and food services, retail trade and manufacturing. And and the top five major occupations include sales assistants, aged and disabled carers, registered nurses, retail managers, and general clerks. And as we said before, the median weekly earnings in the state of Victoria are around 1200 Australian dollars per week. So this is Ballarat and perhaps it's an area, it's a city that you may want to consider. Now, next on our list is Gold Coast. And many people are going to be surprised about this because the Gold Coast is actually considered a regional area for migration purposes. Now, the Gold Coast is located in the state of Queensland and it's a great tourist destination for anyone who likes the beach, the nightlife, theme parks and nature. Now, I remember the first time that I went to the Gold Coast and it actually reminded me of Miami in Florida, in the US. I've been to Miami several times and yeah, the Gold Coast has that kind of vibe, especially as well, not only the vibe, but also the architecture and how and the layout of the city itself, especially all these areas, Surfer's Paradise and Broad Beach, etc. And again, you'll see it in the high rise buildings by the beach, all the bars and cafes and young people 
people partying at night. It's a very lively city, in my opinion. Now, if you want to know more about the Gold Coast, I have a dedicated video about it. Highly recommend watching that. Now, in terms of housing, the city, as all the others in this list, has actually experienced significant growth since the pandemic, so much so that the Gold Coast is today one of the fastest growing cities in Australia. But at the same time, unfortunately, one of the cities that has been most affected by the housing crisis. So I guess this is the downside of this rental boom. To give you an idea, the median rent price in the Gold Coast is around 775 Australian dollars per week for a house and around 530 per week for a unit. So pretty spicy. Now, in terms of the labor market in the Gold Coast, the major five industries are healthcare and social assistance, construction, retail trade, education and training, professional scientific and technical services. And the top five major occupations include sales assistants, registered nurses, retail managers, general clerks, aged and disabled carers. I don't know if you noticed so far, but it's very striking how occupations in retail trade and healthcare and social assistance are actually consistently appearing as the top industries across regional areas here in Australia. I do think that these numbers reflect a bit the fact that Australia has an aging population and more support is required in these industries, especially healthcare and everything that relates to caring. Now, the median weekly earnings in Queensland, where Gold Coast is located, is 1,300 Australian dollars per week, more than Melbourne, surprisingly. So again, the Gold Coast is an amazing alternative, perhaps if you're young or even a retired person and you're seeking a beach lifestyle, but perhaps to take into account that this city is one of the fastest growing cities, as we said, and you may find a bit of issue in terms of finding suitable housing here. But of course, as I always advise, do your own research and try to find whatever suits you best. Now, next on our list is the Alpine region of Victoria. And I know that many of you are probably yelling at the screen and saying, all the cities are in Victoria. Yes, because as I said, these are the cities that I like and that I know well. But probably in the future, I'm going to make videos about other regional areas. But these are my top five. The Alpine region is located a bit over a three hour drive from Melbourne city. What I love about this area is that you're basically living in nature and you're close to beautiful towns like Bright, Middleford, Harrod Bill, Dinner Plain, etc. And again, the beauty of living in the Alpine region, I actually have friends living here. And the beauty is that during winter, you have easy access to the snow, ski resorts, cross-country skiing. And during summer, if you're an outdoor lover, you're surrounded by beautiful mountains and hills, and you can go on hikes, mountain biking, paragliding, rock climbing in Mount Buffalo, swimming in beautiful lakes and more. So again, the Alpine region of Victoria is one of my favorite places in Australia and that's why I included it in this list. Now, something that's important to know is that if you want to live in these areas, it's going to be paramount. It's going to be super important for you to have a car because public transport is not super accessible to get around. To be honest, taking public transport around these areas is a pain and it's super, super time consuming. Connectivity in that sense is not very good. Yeah, I think that's something to take into account. Now, again, the common theme in this video is that all these regional areas have actually experienced significant growth since the pandemic and the Alpine region of Victoria is no exception. So now perhaps towns like Bright are not super accessible to live in. In fact, it's actually very hard to find rental properties here, like for long-term accommodation. But perhaps other towns around the area, say Middleford, are still pretty accessible, although there are not as many rental properties available from what I've seen. For example, the median rental price in Middleford, according to my research, is around 420 Australian dollars per week for a house and 300 Australian dollars for a unit. Although I haven't really seen any apartments or units available for rent in this area. And even when I was there and when I go there, it's mainly houses. Now, when it comes to buying, you can expect to pay around 637,000 Australian dollars per house. Not bad at all. As way of comparison, again, as I said, Bright is a town that has grown significantly during the past years and decade, if you want. And renting a house in Bright will cost you around 577 per week Australian dollars and a unit for around 430 per week. And for buying, for getting, it's over 1 million or even more. It's a very exclusive area, but at the same time, it does represent how beautiful, beautiful this town is. So even if you're not going there to live, I highly recommend at least going for a visit and yeah, even for a weekend. It's 
beautiful. Now, in terms of work, perhaps the Alpine region of Victoria is not the most ideal option if you're planning to work in Melbourne city, right? It's pretty far. But if you have access to remote work or you work in hospitality or trade, perhaps living here is a bit more doable. Now, the Alpine region of Victoria or the Alpine Shire Council is located in the Hume region. And it was a bit hard to find data, but from what I've seen, the top five major industries in this area include healthcare and social assistance, construction, manufacturing, education and training, and retail trade. And the top five major occupations include sales assistants, livestock farmers, aged and disabled carers, registered nurses, truck drivers. As you can see, the picture of the labor market in this specific regional area is slightly different to those that we mentioned previously. Having said that, we still see healthcare and social assistance as one of the major industries. And it's probably one of the major industries across the whole of Australia. Now, again, if you work in professional services, perhaps, and you work remotely, living in these areas may be more doable. Or if you're looking at jobs in hospitality, food services, or retail, perhaps you may be able to find jobs in these areas. To be honest, every time that I go there, I always see signs looking for staff. There are skill shortages, so I highly recommend having a look if you're interested, of course. Now again, in terms of median weekly earnings for the state of Victoria, you can expect to earn around 1200 Australian dollars per week. Now, as I said at the start of the video, there are so many other regional areas across Australia worth exploring. In this video, again, I'm focusing on my top five, the ones that I like, the ones that I know, areas that are growing and that perhaps need more skilled people to fill in jobs and to keep fostering the growth of this country. If you're interested as well, I have a dedicated video about the most affordable capital cities in Australia. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to keep supporting the channel so I can keep bringing more content for you. I'll see you next time and thank you for watching.